This is video number eight now in our series on topics in quantum mechanics from Digital Dash University. Um, in this video, we just want to introduce the concept of unitary operators. And before we do that, let's talk about the um, counterpart of operators, that is matrices. If we have a certain matrix A, we can multiply it by the identity matrix and that just gives back the original matrix uh, that we are working with, matrix A. The other way of identifying the um, or defining the identity matrix is if I have A and if the inverse of A exists then A inverse is equal to the identity matrix. And really these two definitions are the same. We can see that if we multiply, say, both sides of the equation by A, so we have this, but this is I, so we have A I equals I A or A just equals A. So A times identity matrix equals A or A times its inverse is equal to the identity matrix. Now if you have a matrix A, how do you find out what its inverse is? Well, if you can go to the website at digital-university.org and look at videos 10 and 11, there we give a bit of the background as to what characteristics matrix A has in order to possess an inverse to begin with. And then we go ahead and show the procedure with an example there of how you can find the inverse of a matrix. So here now, in this video, we're going to talk about the inverse of a particular type of operator. And to lead into that subject, let's say that we have a particular type of linear operator, we'll call it U, and say it operates on a ket vector B. And when we do that, we get a new ket vector. call it V prime. And let's say the same operator operates on another ket vector, we'll call it A, to give us a new ket vector that we will call A prime. Now here if we use the adjoint of this linear operator, that would work on the bra vector A. And we let's write bra vector A here. This now what we're writing down is the definition of the adjoint. So there's bra vector A being operated upon by the adjoint of the operator and that will give us a bra prime. And again this is just the definition of the adjoint of an operator. We covered that I think it was in video number six. Well when we make this, when we have this new ket vector b prime and this new ket vector a prime let's say that we want to do it in such a way that when we have the inner product of ket vector A and B like this, when we form the new ket vectors, we want the inner product to remain unchanged. So we want the inner product of these to be equal to the inner product of these.
like this. If we want that to hold true, what constraints would we have or what uh, characteristics would the linear operator U have to have in order to make this come true? Well, what is A prime? Bra vector A prime is this. We have A, and then we have the adjoint of U. So that's what this is. What is B prime? B prime is this. So we have U, our linear operator, operating on B. We want that to be equal to this. Well, we can see then that if the product of these two, linear operator U with its adjoint, if that was an identity operator, I, then we would just have, this would just be which is what we wanted it to be. So this type of operator, where we have the operator and we multiply it by its adjoint and it gives us an identity operator, that's called a unitary operator. So we have this, and we can write in either order, that's okay for this, but what we want is a different pen. So we can say that U multiplied by its transpose, or its adjoint actually, is equal to the identity operator. Well, when you have a function or an operator or whatever it is we're dealing with here, and you multiply it by something else, and you get the identity operator, that's the definition of an inverse. That's how we define an inverse. So then this implies that the adjoint of our linear operator U is the inverse of it. So, we saw that for Hermitian operators, it was equal to its own adjoint. That's a special characteristic of the Hermitian operators. Here, for the unitary operators, its adjoint is equal to the inverse of the original operator, U. And these are important in quantum mechanics because these unitary operators preserve the inner product. Here we had two different Keck vectors, B and A, and we made two different Keck vectors, B prime and A prime, but we wanted to do it in such a way that the inner product of our original Keck vectors remain unchanged with the new Keck vectors that we made. And we found we can do that providing that for our linear operator U, that the transpose of it is equal to the inverse of the operator U. These are called unitary operators. Now, when you're working with their counterpart with the matrices, and you're asking yourself, well, how do we find the inverse of a matrix? Uh, again, if you can go to the website and then click on um, linear algebra section, and I think it's um, videos number 10 and 11, there we discuss in some more detail with matrices and the procedure to find the inverse of a matrix, and we have an example worked out there. So that's all I want to say right now in regard regarding um, the unitary operators. Like Hermitian operators, the corresponding eigen, eigen functions or uh, eigenvectors 
of a unitary operator, they are orthonormal. What we can say is for the unitary operators, number one, they preserve the inner product. Number two, their eigenfunctions are orthogonal, just as the case with the Hermitian operators. Not only are they orthogonal, in fact we should have stressed this in the last video, but they are complete. What that means is if you have a unitary operator and you express it in matrix form, if it's a 3 by 3 matrix, then you will have three eigenfunctions associated with that matrix and they will all be orthogonal. Or if you have a 10 by 10, if you have a unitary operator and it's being represented by a 10 by 10 matrix, then you will have 10 orthogonal eigenfunctions associated with that matrix. And that same property also holds true for Hermitian operators. So what we say is that the eigenfunctions are orthogonal and they're complete. And of course, if they're orthogonal, we can also make them orthonormal. and we try to give a simple demonstration of how that's done in the previous video. What about the eigenvalues? If it's a Hermitian operator, the eigenvalues are real. If it's a unitary operator, the eigenvalues do not have to be real. They may be, but they don't have to be. Let's just say do not have to be real. Okay, um, that's all I want to say with the unitary operators. They preserve the inner product, so the consequence of that is, as we just saw, that its adjoint is just the inverse. If we have a unitary operator U, the adjoint of it is just the inverse of U. This follows directly from this that we just demonstrated. And like the permission operators, their corresponding eigenfunctions are orthogonal, so you can make them orthonormal, and they are complete. Same thing for the permission operators. Here for the unitary operators, the eigenvalues do not have to be real. They may be real, but they don't have to be. Okay, that's all I want to say. We will use unitary operators later on, most definitely. What we'll do in the next video then is we're going to start working with position operators. So come back, join us for that video. Also, when we're working with position operators, that will take us then into the Dirac Delta function. So come and join us for that video, and we'll continue on with our discussion.